So you can go, if that helps you keep time. But I, I, what I hear on the record is this. So if you want to be authentic, do that. And make an A chord shape like this. There's a lot of little annoying ways that if you're trying to do a serious recording of this where you can get a lot of annoying sounds. We're going to go over it. Let me try to back it up just a little. That's an old fashioned scale on the floor. I'm making an F chord shape here at the fifth fret. That's four, three, two, one. And we're going to start out with this shuffle feel on the D string. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Like I said, shuffle. It's not robotic. It's uh, then you're going to next include the G string and maintain that shape. So and that, that last one I actually didn't include the the D string because the, the whole thing has to be really all the, str the strings need to be really evenly. So it might seem simple, but the hard part is making it sound really even. Um, so let's try again. Then um, you remove the ring finger, and this is where you can get another annoying sound. From taking off that ring finger can cause this string here to make an unwanted noise, almost like you're doing a pull-off. But you don't want that, so be conscious of that. Play it super slow. This comes off. I'm focusing on strings G and D. This is a little stretch, so my thumb is right on the back of the neck. Pinky is going down on the eighth fret of the D string. So um, from this part here. Can you come down with some muting here with the right hand? Some people will tell you to play this two times. I hear three times because I went and saw what was on YouTube. And I hear three times. But the last time is a little quiet. And that is the fifth fret of the D string. A little more muting after that. And now you're getting into this position where your index finger is staying down on the fifth fret. Start those thin as two strings. And you're beginning a series of pull-offs with your ring finger at the 7th fret thinnest string and your pinky of the on the 8th fret thinnest string to start with anyway and you go on so pull off open I say open but you're you're holding this down here. So. Good. 
fret. Alright, and this is the seventh fret of the B string. Now it is starting on the D string. Pull off again. This time you go over this G string with the middle finger. So from the beginning, and you kind of swing into it. That's the whole point of it, the vibe of it. It's like. back into this again so just you know you we just went over that ending there with the um, seventh fret on the B and we're here and you can go like this too or you can just go I, I what I hear on the original recording is a pause which is um, all on the fifth string going four, three, two. I go with an A string. So you can go, if that helps you keep time. But I, I, what I hear on the record is this. So if you want to be authentic, do that. shape like this. Hit it big and then go up down and then mute it. And that would end the solo. So remember this. Uh, so down picks or you can use alternate picking but sometimes it depends where your picking hand lands because it has to travel a little bit. From the previous part. I think that pretty much covers it. So I believe this will be added to the McDonald's playlist. I think this is one of those songs. I believe this is one that they did play in what, all the time I worked there. Now, of course, they're playing Hey There, Delilah, and Drake, so uh, no one really appreciated that amazing music back then when I was working there. I think they just thought it was some kind of loud vintage music or something but um this is one of those tunes and i did say kind of there was some annoyances with it because it's deceptively simple I, that's not to say it's not a great song it's a fantastic song i only pick good songs to go over if it's not a song i like i don't cover it but um when I say annoyances, obviously it's a great song, but there's things that when you think about playing this song, it almost the stars need to, the solo rather, it's a guitar solo is what we went over. But it's almost like the stars need to align for you to play it perfectly without excess string noise or without uh, the fingers getting in the way doing all those pull-offs. And when you get it right, when you're doing those pull-offs and stuff, the guitar really starts to sing with overtones because of what's going on kind of in the background. So you know when you're doing it right, it's like, oh, it's, it's really singing. So it's a really cool solo. So all I was saying when I said I have annoyances with it is things like when you're going like this. <laughs> You're including the two strings. You gotta make sure it's, it's even. And here, when you lift this off, you need to make sure you're not getting an annoying sound where it's it can be overpowering you when you pull this off. And then it happens very often. I had to make sure to um, minimize that basically. 
So, uh... And this comes up, and somehow on the recording I did pretty good without making annoying sounds. Um, but, you know, with a lot of these rockabilly solos, it's really the subtleties that make them where the playing something a little hard, harder, a little softer, in this part, it has to be so even. Because when you, because, because when you think about double stops, normally you're playing down strokes. Maybe that's what makes it challenging. If you think about Buddy Holly, you're going like. With all down strokes, that's easy compared to this. This is different. This is um a little more challenging. Um, and even if you don't hit that last, that last one, it's got to be as even as possible in every sense of the, of the word. Then here. I don't think you hit it quite like that. Then you slowly inch and you add the fifth. Starting to sing now. Sorry. So at the beginning, it's almost like it's leveling up with each little part. But the main thing is when you're doing the strumming, it has to be even when you're including the playing two strings at a time. And that's a trick. It has to be very even or it's going to sound bad. I thought we could take a quick look at the right hand. Some people might like that. Um, so remember F chord shape at the fifth fret on string the D string here down up down up down up down up now we're gonna well, now we won't in the next down stroke we're going to start including the G string so from the beginning comes off. I'm sorry, a ring comes off. That's, that's the G and the B string. Make sure it's clear. Now we're adding the pinky to fret 8 and B string. Right of the B. You kind of want that nice sound on the pull offs where it's your finger kind of flicks it a little bit and gives it an extra, a little extra uh, texture, if you will. It's also where you don't want to hit the hit excess string noise. It's just kind of easy to make that mistake. And then again, this. And some muting there. You can tell how, where and how I'm muting. This isn't palm muting. This is specific string muting. Open with an upstrum because you're going to come down with an A chord. I'm playing just strings 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm muting the thickest string just in case, but you're strumming from string 5. 
and then up down again. I'll make love to you.